Hey guys, and welcome back to another machine learning tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to be continuing with KNN, so K nearest neighbors, and we're going to be implementing that algorithm throughout our code. I'm going to be showing you guys some cool things we can do with it, how we can actually check the neighbors between different points, obviously how we can uh, score it, see how well we're doing, and test and train our data. Now, I just wanted to remind you guys, uh, in case you want to see any of this stuff text-based, uh, you can go to my website, techwithtim.net. The link is always in the description down below. And currently, this page says protected just because at the moment that I'm recording this, this video is not out. But once these videos come out, uh, these pages will be unpassword protected, so you'll be able to access them. Uh, and essentially, obviously, this is not the tutorial we're doing right now because I haven't yet written this tutorial, uh, but you guys will see that on the website, okay? Uh, and yeah, also, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to go to the forum and post some stuff in here. Some people have already posted and uh, I've answered them like right away because I get email notified. So if you do this, I'll actually probably respond to you, <coughs> excuse me, faster than if you uh, leave a comment on the video. But again, you can feel free to do that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So you guys might have noticed a trend by now that the first video is typically like collecting our data, talking about the data set. The next one is then kind of either talking about how the uh, model works and the final one is implementing it. Uh, if you guys like this kind of process, let me know. I think this works the best. And as we continue to go further and more complex, uh, we're probably gonna have to dedicate more videos to talking about how these algorithms really work. But I hope you guys noticed by now that collecting the data is usually the um, hardest process, right? Because we need to get our data in the correct form. So that's just something to think about as we continue on with machine learning. Okay, so we're going to create our classifier. Uh, and we've already done similar things to this. So we're just going to do model equals k nearest classifier like this. Uh, we'll give some brackets here. And these brackets actually take one parameter. And this is the amount of neighbors. So there's a few other ones that we can do in here. Uh, but essentially, remember, I was talking about how many neighbors we want. Now, again, this is a hyper parameter, meaning that you kind of tweak it as you continue to train the model. For me, I'm just going to start with uh, five. I think I actually have to do like, yeah, I have to do n underscore neighbors equals five. Um, but play around with this. Do seven, do nine, do 11, uh, do one and see what accuracy scores you're getting based on this. And if you guys find like a really good accuracy, let me know what neighbors you you use okay because i'm not going to play around with it too much now that we've done this we're going to do the exact same thing we've done before we're just going to do model.fit and we'll do x underscore train y underscore train and uh, again that's literally all we have to do to train the model and now we're just going to test it for accuracy so we can just do model dot uh what do you call it score and then in here we're just going to do x underscore test y underscore test and then we can simply print our accuracy to the screen like we've been doing throughout the other tutorials so let's just go ahead and run this quickly um, and you see we get a 0.9 percent accuracy so that's okay but let's actually just see what we can get if we're tweaking the amount of neighbors and we do some stuff like that so let's do neighbors equals 7 um, and 91 okay maybe let's try 9 and see if we can increase this accuracy at all so we're getting 94 then off of nine neighbors. So with this data set, maybe more neighbors is what's gonna work well. Again, you guys gotta play with that. I'm not gonna go through all of it. Okay, so I wanna do again a, a similar thing that we did with linear regression where I wanna see what the data points are, uh, what our predictions and what the actual value is. So uh, I'm just gonna do a for loop and loop through the test data and print out that test data and then the prediction and what the actual value is so we can see how well we're really doing just by looking at data points. So I'm just gonna create a list called names first and this is just gonna be uh, the names that like our classifier classifies our things as, right? Because what our classifier is actually doing is it's classifying uh, from zero to three, right? Where zero is gonna represent on ACC and then three is going to represent uh, ACC. I have the names are very good. Sorry. So uh, I'm just going to put these names here so we can actually get not just a number. We can get the actual value. OK, so we'll have good and we have very good. Now, this is just what the data set uses as names. Feel free to change these if you want. Um, but this is what I'm going to do for here. OK, so now I'm going to create a for loop <clears throat> and I'm just going to say four. Uh, and I guess we're actually going to have to do what do you call it? Uh, we'll just do x in range and then the len of uh, x underscore test because we're going to need the index here. So what we'll do now is we'll simply print out, uh, what do you call it, predicted, uh, yeah, we'll do predicted data first I guess if I could spell predicted correctly and all we'll do there is we're going to do 
Ah, I am forgetting something, aren't I? I need to predict the data first. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, predicted equals model dot predict. And then in here, we can just do x underscore test. There we go. So now we'll get all that predicted data. And then instead of x test, let's just do predicted here, just because that's what I did before. And then in here, we're just going to do predicted and then whatever that x value is. And then I don't know if I want to do this on the same line or not. You know what? Maybe it'll look better on the same line. We'll do predicted. We'll do data. And the data is just going to be this x test data, right? So x test x. Um, and I guess I could actually just do a comma that'll make things a bit easier okay and then we'll just do uh, actual and this is just going to be the y train data or the y test data right and at that x value so assuming i didn't make any mistakes which i probably did this should just print out all of our test data with the predicted value first the actual data and then what the uh actual value of that data is okay so let's see here and there we go okay so essentially, let's go up to the top. I guess we did actually have a lot of uh, testing data here. So I predicted two. We had uh, this is the actual data and the actual value is two. And see if you can find a mistake. Okay, so this one's a mistake, two, and it uh, the actual value is zero, right? So you can go through and kind of look for that. Now, I just realized I didn't even end up using this names. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to do names uh, surrounding this predicted here. And essentially, all this is going to do, and we'll do the same thing here, is... It's just going to use because these numbers are going to be indexes, right? They're going to be uh, zero through three. So if the predicted value is zero, it's just going to print on ACC. If it's one, it's going to print ACC. And then exact same thing for names. Uh, that's pretty straightforward how that works. So let's run this. And there we go. So we see it says good and then be good. And like you can go through and look at all of that. Okay, so that's essentially it for like predicting and doing that. No, I just want to go through a few other things that we can do with KNN uh, and some more values that we can kind of look at in case that's something that we're interested in or we want to like graph some data or whatnot. So I'm just going to open up Google here. Sorry, that's not what I wanted to have open. I want to have this open. Uh, and this is actually, I want to show you guys this because this is the SK Learn kind of documentation. And essentially, this is the documentation for KNN. So you can see we have fit, get params, neighbors, uh, predict, score. So we've already used three of these, right? We've used fit, uh, predict, and score. But if we actually wanted to get the neighbors for each data point that we're predicting, we can do that with uh, with neighbors. OK, so essentially what this is going to return to us and you can kind of just look at it here uh, is what well, takes the X value, the amount of neighbors, and then it's going to return the distance to each of those neighbors. So let's just go down and have a look at this documentation. And you can see it's going to give us two arrays if we have this uh, last value true, which it's default to be true. And it's going to give us the distance to each point that is that amount of neighbors, and it's gonna give us the index of that point within our data set. So if we want to uh, have a look at exactly what those points are, we can index them and look at them. So rather than me just talking about this, let's actually just copy this in and let's use this. So what we can do is uh, underneath here, we'll do it in the same loop actually, we'll just do model uh, dot neighbors, okay? And then we're gonna give it that X value. Now this is gonna, Gotta be weird how you give it uh, that data, but essentially you just have to put brackets like this, and then you do uh, what do you call it? X underscore test and X. Now the reason you have to do this is because you can technically give this, or it's actually supposed to take a two-dimensional array. But when we give it this, um, and we only want one value, we just have to put it inside of another like little list thing so that it comes in as two-dimensional. It's because it doesn't know how to look at data that's not two-dimensional, essentially. Uh, and I think we can actually, we'll do the amount of neighbors, so in this case, nine, and then we'll just put true here, even though that's not really necessary. Um, and if we wanted to decrease the amount of neighbors we're looking at, we could put like five, we put three, we put one, uh, and it'll just give you the closer ones in that case, right? So let's actually store this under, uh, let's just say N. And if we want to print out this data for each point, well, we just have to print N, right? So it's going to give us uh, two arrays for each of these sets. So let's just do uh, like N just so we know what we're kind of looking at here. And we'll put a comma like that. Okay, so let's try this now, KNN. Uh, and wow, okay, so this output's not very pretty, but we are getting the output that we want. So let's try to have a look at this. So predicted was good, the data was this, the actual value was this, and then here's our array. Okay, 
So essentially it's saying that the distance between all these points is one. Uh, so between the nine neighbors and the, oh, and then we have some distances of 1.41. Um, and yeah, you can see that. And then it's gonna give us the index of all of our different neighbors here. So you can see that the first neighbor was this and it had one of the closest values of one and they correspond to obviously the lengths that are here. So if you wanted to technically plot this data like on matplotlib, um, it wouldn't be particularly easy to do so, uh, but working with this data, you could definitely get ki some kind of a, a plot going if you want to look at that. So uh, with that being said, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. Essentially, I just wanna show you guys how we can do this. Uh, you guys can probably guess how to use the other classifiers by now, but I really recommend you keep going through and, and following along with me because I'm gonna use more and more complex data and you guys already know that the data is kind of the hardest part of this, getting it in the right form. So understanding how you can do that will help you be able to use your own data in the future, which is obviously the goal. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed the video, again, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Go follow to my Twitter for exclusive updates and uh, video release dates and yeah.